For the longest time, despite doing this writing project for around five years at time of recording, I'd questioned whether or not what I do is considered art. It's not that the classification was going to make or break this passion for me, but it was still a nagging thought from time to time. Being on hiatus for a few months gave me more time to reflect on what being an artist means and how some of our experiences are universal. Despite daydreaming and fantasizing a fair bit in my waking life during walks and empty moments, I'd pick on myself for never really taking up fiction writing, especially since that would make me a real artist. However, it was refreshing to talk with other artists and realize that the things I experience in the process of doing nonfiction writing are similar to what artists of other mediums go through. We have plenty of ideas, but the energy to express only so many of them. Lots of works in progress that sit stagnant and only sometimes get finished, and the persistent itch to retcon or tweak earlier works to meet our new level of skill. It is these shared experiences that help me acknowledge what I do as art and I, an artist. What stands out the most from these similarities to me is the difference between what's on our minds as artists and what we actually end up expressing. Art is expression, but it's impossible to express everything. This brings me to what I like to call the river and the shot glass problem. It's a metaphor that explains so well how immense things like information and emotion are, and how we have to be mindful of our limited capabilities of taking those things in and expressing them outwards. I was talking to a programmer one day, and she mentioned that you don't really master a programming language because that language is a river, and the human brain is a shot glass. That's where I got the metaphor for this video from. We may see it as a point of weakness or lack of experience for someone to ask questions about their code online, or get a second opinion on their writings from an expert, but this is how knowledge is supposed to work. Great man theory and toxic masculinity force us to believe that a knowledgeable person never says, I don't know and always has a solid, objective answer. The reality is that information is so vast that to hold it, so to speak, requires a network of people working with each other to cover blind spots or fill in information on topics they're more passionate about than you. I take advantage of this myself and get input from friends of mine before I start turning an essay into a video. My works have been read by plenty of people I've known over the years who have credentials in the field of psychology, and even aside from those fancy-pants college degrees, some of my friends know things in the topics that I'm interested in that I didn't know previously. For example, one of my besties, upon reading a draft for my video on loot boxes and psychology, told me about Skinner boxes, which I had never heard about. Integrating that concept into the video as a subject to center each section around really brought the writing together and resulted in a more pointed and organized commentary. I say in passing that the ideas in my videos are never 100% mine, and that's because the expression I make through writing is seasoned and refined by critique before it makes it out to the public. As they say, all art is derivative. So when taking information in or processing it, I like to have that web to rely on which helps me cover blind spots and really refine what I'm about to put out. I'm not naively trying to pretend that my one shot glass holds the whole river. That's silly. But this is only about using the shot glass to take something in. I think the metaphor works the other way around in terms of trying to express things outward. Just as the topic you're passionate about is as immense as a river, what you feel on the inside is just as immense. And now instead of using a shot glass to hold the immensity in, you're using that shot glass to express the immensity out. The river of consciousness flows with such a torrent that ideas pass by or need to be caught to save and chisel away at later. It's a mess, but it's also a compromise. Some prefer to dress up the shot glass, fill it with sparkling water and add gold flakes. To them, the expression isn't about filling the glass to the very top, but instead making sure that it's something that sticks with you when you're done. Obviously, this results in a smaller portion of that river of consciousness being expressed. Philosophy channels that were on this end of expression confused me for the longest period of time. Their videos aren't massively substantive, they talk slower, rely a lot on editing, and tend to cover topics that the layperson has some familiarity with. Channels like School of Life, Exerbia, and Horses come to mind. I don't say this as an insult because I understand what they're doing now and sometimes give myself a hard time for not dressing up the things I say a bit more, even though I'm just not capable of doing what they can on that front. Their videos are the ones you share with your friends who maybe just need some philosophy in a dark time, some guidance on their introspection, or a thought to chew on for a while. People need that toe dip to figure out if something deserves their passing glance or their full admiration. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who got into STEM fields after watching Mythbusters or Brainiac as a kid, and I suppose the equivalent for philosophy are these sorts of avenues. 
Even if they decide not to dive in completely, some people prefer their relationship with philosophy to be more topical, which is also valid. There's no wrong way to enjoy a passion. Getting back to the spectrum of expression, the other side of it tends to have artists who are trying to cover the whole damn bar counter with shot glasses. Doesn't matter if they have to use the cheesy collector's ones in the back, or if some of them have a crack in it but still hold water. The amount of their videos that are profound enough to keep in your consciousness for years and circulate with others down the road is a lot less than those that really dress up the point, but they express much more of that stream of consciousness and in doing so cover a lot more ground. Lewis Rossman comes to mind with his frequent uploads and occasional videos with a deeper message. Again, I don't make these observations to be insulting. It takes a lot of energy and plenty of confidence to pump out thoughts that frequently without feeling self-conscious about it. I suppose the comfortable recliners and adjustable mic arm help a fair bit. Looking at these two ends of expression, I have a feeling I land somewhere in the middle. I don't express things unfiltered. I take time to choose what words I want to use and how I use them. The actual content of the video, the writing, and the voiceover audio get plenty of love at the sacrifice of not doing any fancy editing or using background music to relish my talking. Basically, I'm not trying to line the bar table, nor am I sprinkling in gold flakes. I suppose that's what people enjoy about me. They're here because I'm not bombarding them, nor am I trying to dress up something smaller when they want more. Knowing my place in this grand scheme of things is pretty satisfying, because you really can't be on both ends of the spectrum at the same time. Some days, I'd be upset with myself for not being the type of person to make the kind of video essay that leaves someone with a lot of emotions like Exerbia can. Other days, I'd feel unaccomplished that I don't have the kind of output of people like Lewis Rossman, especially since I express a fuckload of thoughts in progress and philosophies and calls on my server or with close friends compared to what I'm actually capable of structuring and organizing into videos for my audience. What I've learned from this is that there's no real metric. Applying meritocracy and comparison to artistic expression is nonsensical. Don't force cheap subwoofers in the back of a car to sound like a home theater system. Don't force minimalism on the engineer with a cluttered desk. It's better to play into ourselves than trying to cover that up with a different flavor of expression. You'll have a lot more fun using those shitty car subwoofers to play nasty bass than to impress an audiophile. That engineer will get a lot more done with the disorderly nature of their messy desk than a clean one to impress onlookers and you'll feel a lot better about your expression by playing into your style of doing so and your specific areas of talent. It's not only what we express, but also how we express it that reflects who we are. Really, this is my fancy way of saying that you shouldn't be afraid to be more. Don't try to be other people, just try to be more. Your audience, your friends, they're here for you. Your style and your expression will evolve with time, inspired but not replaced by that which you look up to. And you'll know you're doing right with this when you feel better about how well you express things now than before. And that's my conclusion after pontificating on the river and the shot glass.